Hi, my name is Enid Conway and I initiated Bloomers in 2018. Bloomers is a multi-channel arts organisation that's committed to the discussion of emerging artists based in Ireland. And we do that online through events and collaborations like the collaboration with Catalyst and through Commoner Garden now and through the printed publication Bloomers magazine. We originally set out to discuss emerging female artists based in Ireland but now we cite the word female as too exclusionary to trans, non-binary or gender queer folk. The, the independent publishing community in Ireland and historically zine making practices is a source of media reclaimed by persons who are marginalised by society due to their political beliefs or any facet of their identity. Um, I initiated Bloomers just after the Repeal the Eighth campaign uh, where there was this big sense of kind of uh, everyone coming together to protest this really oppressive Eighth Amendment that allowed the state to govern the bodies of people with uteruses. Um, and around the time there was a lot of artists making work and a tremendous community support. And to document that, the first issue of Bloomers featured several illustrators. Um, the underlying motive that drives the concept of each issue of Bloomers is the reclamation of media and on a deeper level than uh, language and meaning. Um, when I was studying a BA in Crawford College of Art and Design in Cork, um, I came across Helene Sisu's idea that when we're born, we're born into the, the law of the father or the word of the father. We sort of learn a language system that's inherently patriarchal because it was created by patriarchy. And when we're born, we learn that language to survive. Um, I think artists experimenting and discovering new modes of communicating ideas uh, can sort of mitigate or circumvent this in a way. And especially, you know, actively feminist ones. And the beauty of zines is that this form both uh, validates a person's story by presenting it as a book. It also now has the historical connotation of being anti-establishment, which is a sentiment that I think connects people to each other um, and can motivate them in a uniquely energised way. So issue six contains a curated selection of work, of works that demonstrate how artists are utilising new technologies in their work and the consequences of how new technologies impact our storytelling and how they exist in our world and how will how they'll come to exist in the future. The impact of the last year has definitely emphasised our relationship with technology and the issue explains how the work featured illustrates reactions to the last year to describe our contemporary cyborgian condition. The Cyborg Manifesto was written by Donna Haraway in 1985 and has much to offer in a world where previously unchanging terms like race and sex and even humanity um, are problematized and contested. And here the cyborg depicts a model of fluid identity, um, transcending traditional boundaries of sex and gender and liberation from systems of binary oppositions and privilege. So cyborg means the union of cybernetics and organism. So it, it isn't necessarily like Terminator or humanoid robots or anything like that, but the word was invented to describe how by using medication an astronaut could potentially change themselves on a molecular level in order to exist um, outside of the Earth's atmosphere in space. And how technology alters your organism uh, is kind of the focus of the issue. And then we were thinking about how developing a, a vaccine for COVID-19 um, is similar in that way, uh, in that it's meant to allow us to kind of tame a dangerous atmosphere from the inside out using technology. Um, because the word cyborg was coined during the space race in the 1950s, 60s, like early 70s, there is kind of a whole world of connected ideas that kind of shape our understanding of cyborgianism and technology and the future and space and interpretations of these ideas and how they're kind of distilled into the world that we live in really. 
But next we're going to hear from Kim, who curated the zines for the zine library that we sent to Catalyst for the collaboration with the exhibition Commoner Garden. And she also curated the Hypertext exhibition map, which is the launch project for issue six that's active in Cork City until the 26th of December. So yeah, thanks very much. Hi, I'm Kim and I curated the Bloomers Library for Commoner Garden in Catalyst. Um, the idea for the zine library stems from a long-term project that um, we conduct as part of Bloomers. The Bloomers zine stall um, and that is a pop-up zine stall which we bring around to different festivals and events um, and we showcase um, publications, zines, artist books, um, independent publishing by artists um, throughout Ireland and further, further afield. Our interest in zine culture as part of Bloomer stems from the fact that we are an independently produced publication um, and over the years we have also conducted zine workshops and have produced the Dream Zine which was a collection of um, work that was produced during Bloomer's zine workshops. The zines that I selected for the Bloomer Zine Library range from photocopied publications, limited edition artist books, alongside past issues of Bloomer's magazine. It features several artists, one of whom is Sarah Edmondson, and her publication takes the form of um, printed instructions on folded sheets of paper in envelopes and she wants to encourage participants to reenact her performance where she blew out birthday candles in isolation so it's a very interesting way of translating a physical performance piece into a publication. Another prominent artist is Annie Forrester who is also a member of the Bloomers team. Um, she is a prolific artist and is constantly creating zines um, as a way of self-expression and she's an illustrator um, and we've included a lot, a few of her zines as part of the zine library including her ones entitled um, Bath Time which chronicles her, her relationship with the bath tub, um, Missy Elliott and Mermaids so uh, we've got quite a selection by Annie featured in the library. Um, another Cork artist which we feature is Sarah Long and she really has used the idea of a print publication or zine as an extension of her own artistic practice which um, explores the ideas around language and the landscape. Um, also, I've included a zine by myself entitled My Mouldy House and Me, which is quite clean and minimal in aesthetic when you when you look at it first, but it chronicles my relationship with a particular mouldy house that I was living in at the time. So, in conjunction with the release of issue 6 of Bloomer's magazine, Hypertext, um, I've produced the Hypertext exhibition map which twins various locations around Cork City with pieces of work by artists featured uh, in the issue. So the map can be accessed by scanning QR codes which I've dotted around the city both on billboards in various locations and on stickers outside locations around the city. When you scan uh, the QR code, you are brought to a piece of work by an artist. Um, for example, we have put Natasha Burke's Inside Out Triptych at the site of the old Foss building, um, where the film was initially recorded. Um, we've also put Eileen Seeley's Impromptu Picnic down by the historic Cork docks. Um, and Aveen Brady's piece, An A to Z of What to Do When You Miss a Bus. We've put that alongside the Parnell Place bus station. Thanks so much and hope that you enjoy participating in the Hypertext exhibition map and the release of Issue 6 of Bloomers. Thanks a million. Uh, hello, my name is Emily O'Brien. I'm the literary editor for Bloomers Emerging Artists Ireland and I'm here to talk about our sixth issue, Hypertext. Uh, basically, I guess I'll start off with, by saying, talk about the concept. Um, 
which came about when me and Edith did a residency in um, the guest house in Cork City and uh, Enid was just talking about how she wanted to do an issue that was based on cyborgian theory and like the digital um, and I thought it was a brilliant idea because I like I think even since bloomers began um, we kind of were floating around with that idea like the whole time so I was really happy that Enid was like you know let's just like let's just get it done it'll be really cool especially because uh, for a good few years now I've been really interested if not involved um, in the independent Irish games community which kind of go went hand in hand then with the because Bloomers is an independent com like a collective as well uh, for publishing and writing and art um, so when she uh, came to me with the concept I thought that I would do a piece I would do something on the Irish games community because from following, because I did my piece on, on a game called Curtain by Dreamfield, uh, Laura McGee, um, who I have known for a good few years now, um, and just from following her and her team, Dreamfield, on Twitter for so long, um, I just, and also because I think that actually Curtain was probably the first game that I played that was an independently Irish made game that also like combined art with Te like the digital basically and made me realize that a medium that I always enjoyed which is video games you could use that to um, convey an experience that wasn't necessarily you know your typical video game experience it was like art basically um, so I was really excited that I would be able to finally kind of explore that through this issue of bloomers so um, I asked Laura if it was okay she said yes she also has a new game out um, Laura and Dreamfield, the team that she works with, uh, have a new game I called If Found, uh, which is amazing, absolutely incredible. The article that I wrote for the for this issue of Bloomers kind of explores that, like using the digital um, to explore like trauma and um, an artistic way of using technology, which is you know. Technology would normally be associated with like more of the mathematical side of things or the, or the you know technical things, but it can also be used to create something that is more visually or hourly um, stimulating. So yeah, basically using a curtain as the subject for my piece in this issue of Bloomers it made a lot of sense because not only because you know the this issue's theme is the digital world and that sort of thing, uh, but it was also because of like the way that both Bloomers and Dreamfield, at least at the beginning, were um, very much a DIY like community, like universal thing that you can do, like to show that anyone can publish a magazine or a zine or make a game, um, which is something that's really important, um, I think, to still to Dreamfield, but also very much to Bloomers, um, what with the zine fair, and because, again, we are a completely independent published publication. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's kind of all I wanted to say. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the things that we did. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for listening. Hi, my name's Lily O'Shea. I'm a visual artist based in Cork. And recipient of the Bloomers Writers Award 2020. As part of the collaboration between Bloomers Magazine and Catalyst Arts Centre, I contributed a response to Commoner Garden um, to Bloomers sixth issue Hypertext. Um, so I'm just going to briefly talk about the research surrounding this piece of text, which was called Collaborative Survival in Precarious Times. Um, Basically, my intention with this text was to identify commonalities between Bloomer's hypertext and Catalyst's commoner garden. Um, and from my point of view, the relationship between both discourses was based on a collective examination of different methods of survival during times of instability. Um, my research was focused on the figure of the cyborg in relation to anti-capitalist commons um, and was mainly informed by Donna, Donna Haraway's essay, Cyborg Manifesto, uh, Sylvia Federici's book, Reenchanting the World, and Anna Lohenhaupt Singh's book, The Mushroom at the End of the World. 
Um, reading these texts alongside the premise of hypertext uh, led me to explore technological utopianism, which is an ideology based on the idea that accelerated forms of science and technology has the potential to bring about an ideal society or a utopia. Um, so techno-utopias could include political movements such as accelerationism, um, futurism or a cyborgian theory. Um, this led me to further explore the criticism that surrounds techno-utopias um, in which it's been argued that technology has increased the all-seeing eye of capitalism. Um, for me, this opposition or critique is also present in the exhibition Commoner Garden and highlighted for me the need to re-articulate commons on a basis of collective solidarity rather than immiseration. Um, this essentially led me to conclude with Anna Lohenhop Singh's notion of collaborative survival in which she argues that essentially there are no commons with our community. So thank you to Leah Corbett and Catalyst for getting in touch to suggest this collaboration. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about what we're up to. And thanks for tuning in.